<laughs> Charlie did it good for me right here. It's good right here. That's probably even better. Oh, I should just leave it alone. When I come up here, I thought, man, I'm short. I don't remember being that low. <laughs> hey, it's good seeing everybody this morning. Um, let's start off with the swords. If you got your sword with you today, hold those up high. Lick those fingers. Lick those fingers. We're going to turn through those today. If you have it on your phone or your uh, smart tablet or stuff like that, uh, we're going to get through a lot of that scripture today. Now today I want to talk to you today about something that uh, a lot of people, including people who call themselves Christians, don't like to talk about. Things that uh, we just soon skip over. And um, I think that uh, across the world and the uh, United States, that uh, we used to have pastors who would preach hell, uh, hellfire and brimstone. You know that? You know, they get up and, and preach, and, and it just. Uh, made people uncomfortable. And uh, so we used to preach on things like heaven, hell, sin, uh, forgiveness, grace, and, and so much more about how to live our lives as Christians and how to stay on the path. But there's been a movement about being uh, politically correct and about... Uh, doing things so that we don't offend anyone that we kind of started preaching, uh, churches have preached on things that are uh, the good stuff. You know what I mean? And when I say that, I mean that we preach about heaven, how great it's going to be and you're going to love to be there. We forget, we, we, they preach about forgiveness and, you know, oh, we all be forgiven, you know, forgive you. We talk about grace and, and um, it slipped in to where that's all we want to talk about is stuff that makes us feel good. Pastors have um, gotten to the point where they don't want to lose their flock. You know what I mean? And, and uh, it's amazing how many people will take something that I say and, and misconstrue it and take one part and say, okay, well, that's what he said, and so we're out of here. And um, I, for those of you who know me, if you go back to the past four weeks online and listen to the, the sermons of why I love my church, one of the things, I, the reason I love this church, my church, when I say my church is because this is my place of worship, is that we believe and preach on the Word of God. Amen. And I believe that as a pastor, I have to preach the stuff that make you feel good that you walk out of here and lift it up a little bit higher than the way you come in because the world can beat you down. And I believe also that as a pastor, I have to preach the good and the bad. Amen. And at the time, I've got to preach about things that make you squirm a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, ooh. Kind of, you make you put your feet underneath your chair because I've, I've been stepping on your toes because God's stepping on mine. Oh, kind of things that you preach about where you, you go digging deep internally and you go, is he talking right to me? <laughs> Does he know what happened this week of my life? Because it looked like he's preaching right to me. And uh, i got to be honest with you. When I preach to you, I preach to me. And today, I'm preaching about something that... I don't know. I, now, forget the way we kind of uh, make it sound. Today I'm going to be preaching on sin. Sin. You know, we all want to talk about forgiveness, we all want to talk about grace, we want to talk about things, but sin is what brought Jesus Christ here to die on the cross. <laughs> you know, so we need to talk about it. If I was going to ask you today, what is sin? How would you describe it? How would you define what sin is? 
Would you say, uh, let's tell them why? Well, is that a little white lie or is that a big lie? <laughs> what about murder? We all like, we like to go to that one. Mm -hmm. Murder. Stealing. Things like that. You know, those are, are uh, sins that have been committed, but that doesn't really define what sin is.
I was just thankful that there was no patrolmen around because they would have gotten me. And you know, we all we all know that that old saying. Uh, Kathy Witten spoke it the other day and said, nine, you're fine, ten, you're mine. Yeah. You know what that means? Nine miles an hour over the speed limit, you're usually all right, but ten, they're going to give you a ticket. Now, I've got to be honest with you, if you go to the book of Romans, it says all laws are inspired and, and uh, brought that are uh, have God's hand upon them, and so that we as Christians should be following those laws, and so at 65, I had to let off, Todd. I, I had, had regard for the law. Now, I know what you're saying, especially you're going, okay, Pastor, what does speeding have to do with sin? How does that go to spiritual life? Well, the truth of the matter is that when it comes to lawlessness or man's law, it's the same for God's laws. That if we know what God's laws are, and we have no regard for them, we are basically breaking the law and overstepping that boundary that God says, this is the laws that I've laid out for my people. I want you to obey them. So if I break one of God's laws, then I have committed sin. If I were to ask you right now, how many can name just the Ten Commandments? Could you name all ten of them? If I could go on and ask you other questions about what God asked you to do as a Christian, could you name those? So, as a person, um, I have broken God's laws. When I talk with a child, a lot of times young children will come and they'll, they'll want to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I have to ask them about what sin is. I always ask them those questions. Because they need to kind of understand, well, not kind of, they need to understand what sin is. And they'll say, uh, I say, I sit down with them, I say, do you know what sin is? Yes, when you do something bad. Okay, uh, what, what's kind of bad? And, and well, and mommy tells me to stay in the yard and I go outside and, you know, and I don't pick up the toys. Okay, that, that's okay. But who does sin hurt? Who doesn't like sin? Mommy and daddy don't like sin. Mommy and daddy they don't like sin. Well, the truth of the matter is, God doesn't like sin. God doesn't like sin. And where he's at, he does not allow sin in. And so when I look for for that child to go, yeah, mom and dad don't like sin, and I go, yeah, they don't, do they? I mean, they want you to live a good life. And anybody else don't like sin? Um, no, that's about it. If they say, no, that's about it, that's usually a good sign that they're not ready. They don't understand. But when that child goes, you know, um, God doesn't like sin. That's uh, not. They understand. Think about it, let's turn to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. <clears throat> Verse 18 and 19. Matthew 15, verse 18 and 19. <clears throat> the Bible reads this way. But the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. Anytime you see that word heart in the Bible, and most of the time something when it talks about the heart, something about like the heart and the brain connected. From the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, fornications, thefts, false witness, slander. Those are what defile the man. From out of the heart come evil thoughts. You know, it'd be 
different if we all walked around and, and we had our, <coughs> our, our hearts, our sins on our sleeve. They're just so they, 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 they're, they're, they're liars and they're thieves. And, you know, back in the old days, back in biblical times, if you were convicted of the law, you had to carry around a sign that said what your problem is, what your sin was. What if we did that? What if we went out today and we said, okay, make a list of your sins? to justify our sins. So, but I, really, I, I would have lost my temper had they not pushed my buttons. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't have cheated on my spouse had my spouse been showing me some attention. Uh, I wouldn't have robbed that from the store if I didn't need it. You see what I'm saying? We can go on. I wouldn't have told that lie, but the boss wanted me to come to work, and I really had other things to do. James chapter 2, verse 10 says that if we keep all the law but stumble in one area, we're guilty of all. Meaning that if I'm 99% good in my life, if I'm 99%, good, and I'm 54 years old, and I live 54 years of Pretty good life. I mean, I didn't sin. I didn't say anything wrong. I was always uplifting. I always did the right thing. I followed God's law. But I told that one little white lie. That means I'm guilty as much as I, I broke all the laws. Because I'd be a sinner, right? We like to say, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so, but I'm not as good as so-and-so. We like to do comparison. We like to do price comparison. Guess what? There's only one person you need to be comparing yourself to, and that's Jesus Christ, and we all fall short. <laughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 20 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Does that mean everyone? Bobby, you're shaking your head, Jess. That means everyone? You mean it's the old lady that lives right beside me that doesn't do anything wrong? I don't see her out very much. She's living a good life. You mean she's a sinner? <coughs> Rod, you mean everyone that we run across and in in everyone out on the streets, everyone you give a ride to in the bus, everyone that steps in, we're all sinners? I don't like the answers from this side. Mark, there's not, there's not one person that I could say that, I, hey, if I were going to be there, uh, they live the sinless life. You mean I can't find anyone? None righteous, no, not one. None righteous, no, not one. Man. Does that mean everyone in this room? Yes. Somebody go, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my wife said in the back, she's going to tell her, but I told her I'm a saint, all right? <laughs> Turn her microphone off, please. <laughs> hey, take your Bible turn to Romans chapter five. Put something in there too because we want to come back to this here in a second. Romans chapter 5. Begin reading in verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man's sin entered into the world, talking about Adam there, right? Just as one man's sin entered into the world, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because of all sin. When ladies, when that says men, that means you too. That's mankind. Verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin was not imputed when there is no law. 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even though even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. Then jump up to verse 17. I want to show you some things. 
For if by transgression of the law and death reigned through one. Verse 18. So then as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men. Verse 19. For as through one man's disobedience the many were made sinners. Verse 20. The law came in so that the transgression would increase. You know what? When I saw that sign that said 60 miles an hour, I was reminded that the speed limit, that the law of the land was 60. Maybe the reason we don't want to read our Bibles, Clark, is because we don't want to know what God's law is for my life, so I'm not going to be convicted of it. But guess what? You are born a sinner. That means every man, woman, boy and girl who's born in this world is a sinner. You don't have to teach them to lie. Who broke that lamp? I don't know. <laughs> There's a ball there on the side. Was that you? Okay. You don't have to teach a child to steal. Okay. I want that. It's mine. You don't have to teach a, 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 a anyone, anyone, man, woman, boy, or girl, to to decide. Hey, I want to covet that. I want that. That looks so good. I wish I had that. I think I would have cut it from my very own. <laughs> Guess what? That's three of the Ten Commandments. We've all failed with those. That's not counting about honor your father and mother. Bam! There's a big one. Okay, let's go about. Hey, keep the Sabbath holy. Guess what? We don't keep the Sabbath holy anymore. Amen. I could go on and on and on. Thou, thou shalt honor the Lord God and be holy, right? Isn't that what He tells us to be? So guess we're all sinners. Sin came in through Adam. God set down the law and said, hey, you can have anywhere in this garden to eat except for that tree right there. The law. That was the law. God's law. Well, that looks awful good. I want it. Adam, we should eat that. Broke the law. See it. Sin can come into the world, come out of people three different ways. Our thoughts, our words, and our deeds or our, or our actions. So our thoughts, meaning that if we have a thought, even though we do not act on it, this says a sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15 says this. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. What? I didn't kill him. I, I just hate him. I, I don't like you. Not you. The other person. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer is eternal life abiding in him. see someone and you wish that you were committing adultery with them, that you're guilty of adultery. That changes the way we look at people, doesn't it? Boy, she's behind. Where's your mind just going? Boy, he's the one. Look at that my sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one about Tony Lambert ever. <laughs> I 
say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. And whoever says you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. You mean i got to watch my words too? This one right here speaks to the church, speaks to you. And although they know the ordinances of God, they've been brought up in church. Hey, I, I was brought up in church, and, and you know, I had that drug problem, got drugged to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're going to church, don't live in this house. You know, and you got drugged. I don't want to go to church. You're going. You don't like it. No. looking at them and I'm putting Christians look at me if you are living something that goes against God's ordinances against God's law and you say well I don't care I know what God's law says I'm the one that's going to have to answer for it you're right you're going to have to give an uh, account for that every, uh, every idle word you'll give an account for but what it says is if you go ahead and live like, like, like that on this earth you're putting your stamp of approval that it's okay to live like that, and you might be the best Bible that someone's ever read. Amen. Amen. Right. So you say, well, I'm going to do it. I don't care what they say. Everyone's got something that they do, Rad. Everybody's got some little sin that they got in their life. You might be hiding in the closet or doing something like that. No one's going to know about it. Someone is going to find out about it because your sin will come to light. says, for the wages of sin is death. You know that death is eternal separation from God forever. For eternity. I'm not talking about just a little more. It's not like you got a little sentence and you got out. But you get, you've been sentenced to 10 years in hell and then you get to go out where everybody else is at. That's not the way it works. I'm talking about eternity. Sorry, that 
just popped in my head. And Trish and I, we know that person. And I was like, justification? Are you kidding? Look at verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust was con has conceived, it gives birth to what? Uh, say it loud. Yeah. Thank you. Birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. For the way to sin is death. Sin brings about death. I want that. I want to do that. I want to... That didn't come from God. Don't say you're being tempted by God. Hey, that's like saying, well, well I'm, it's not my notes. Hey, 1 Peter 1.16 says, be holy because he is holy. things to admit. <laughs> you know, I've been married. Got to make sure. I'm married in 1985. Maybe 33 years, right, Bob? Well, you might be 33. Right, Trish? Thank you for saying all. 33 years this is coming to life. And right at first, one of the hardest things for me to do was admit that I was wrong. I still don't like <laughs> Don't listen from the back. Listen up here. <laughs> I don't like to admit it very often that I'm wrong. When I'm 
Brenna. I like to say, well, if you'd see things from my side, that rolls into our spiritual life too, doesn't it? Well, God, you know what? Uh, if you'd have just been here, where I was at in the moment and I got caught up and so just kind of forgive me. Today I can guarantee you that God started <coughs> out. You need to understand that you're a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> I will be perfected when I stand before his presence. Amen. chapter 5. I want to turn back there because <coughs> I want you to see what it says. If you go to Romans chapter 5 verse 15 Paul such a great writer. He always gives the good and the bad and the good, you know. It sets the example of how we are to do things. Christians, we can celebrate today. We can celebrate knowing that we were sinners God had a plan of salvation for us. Look what he says here in Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many die, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. Grace. 16. The gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression, resulting in con condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose from many transgressions, resulting in justification. Jesus made you right in God's eyes. Verse 17. For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. <laughs> so then it's through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through one act of righteousness there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one the many were made righteous. The law came in so that the transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Verse 21. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. See, I, I know that I'm a sinner because God's word tells me so. It proved it. The law said 60 mile an hour. I went 65. I broke the law. I'm a lawbreaker. God said, do not tell a lie. I told a lie. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm in need of a Savior. Today, you're one of two people. You can either say, hey, I'm a sinner and I'm needing of a Savior, or two, I've got a Savior and I'm praising God for His grace and His righteousness. Amen. Which one are you? Which one are you? I'm on the rule of him, a hymn of imitation. But we're going to invite you to step out and say, hey, I want to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. We'll have someone take you to a room and show you what God's Word says and let you make that decision. <clears throat> Maybe you're looking for a church home. We'd love to have you be a part of this church. Look forward to say, hey, I want to be a member of this church. We'll have someone take you to a room and ask you some questions and fill out some paperwork and have a prayer with you. Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray. I have no idea. But I think sometimes we can say, 
I've got it covered. I'm a Christian. I'm good to go. Are you striving to be holy? Is there some, is there some sin in your life that you need to confess to God? Years ago, I had a, a friend of mine who was in the ministry. He said something that was so profound that it just smacked me right in the face. His name is Jeff Roberts. And he said, the last time you saw the altars when you got saved, chances are you need to go back to the altar. There's something about humbling ourselves before God and man saying, you know what, God? I've sinned. I need to rededicate my life to get back to you. And that rededication means doing an about face. Turning from the way you were. Repentance. That's a military term. Repent from your old ways and turn back to Christ. Maybe you need to come to the altar and do that today. I have no idea where your life is, but he does. Sin. Father God, I come to you right now. I just thank so much for your word. God speaks to us. And God, as we talk about something that makes us squirm, we never want to admit that we've done anything wrong. We, we don't like to admit that we have fallen short. Pride comes in. 